So I'm usually a pretty big wuss when it comes to horror movies, but I know there's a lot of great films in this genre, so I'm trying to be brave and branch out and watch some of them. So today I'm watching the 1931 film Dracula, starring Bella Lugosi. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've seen a few of his other films and I've really enjoyed them. I know this is his like iconic performance. This is the role he's most known for, so I'm very excited to watch this. I like older movies and I'm fully expecting this to be in black and white. I don't know if there'll be sound or if it'll be silent, but either way is fine with me. I believe this is the earliest version of Dracula. I know there are several versions and renditions of the Dracula story and vampires, obviously, throughout horror movies. So I'm very excited to go back to the original comp below if there's an earlier one. I have seen Nosferatu, um, which I know is based on a character about vampires as well. So uh, you can check out the reaction to that on my channel. But I believe this is the first, like the earliest one titled Dracula, so I'm very excited to finally watch this. All I know about it is obviously that it is going to be about a vampire named Dracula and I'm very curious if it'll be more about like the true origin story of Dracula and sometimes you know different vampire movies have different vampire lore so what will be included in that. I love practical effects so if there'll be any practical effects you know throughout the film obviously you know CGI and computers wouldn't have been around when this came out so I just love the creativity behind practical effects and think it's so cool. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and check back often for more awesome content. Yeah, I did say based on the book by Bram Stoker, so that's good. I haven't read the book. I definitely need to. This would have been such an experience to see in the theater soon with like the sweeping music and, you know, the title cards and everything. So cool. Renfield. I haven't seen the new um, Nicolas Cage movie Renfield, but there was a character named Renfield in this, so yeah. Obviously, it's all tied together. We are bought, and to the Virgin we pray. Yeah, okay, so we just mentioned Nosferatu as well. Interesting. Borgo Pass at midnight. Borgo Pass? Yes. Whose carriage? Count Dracula's. Oh, he's going to walk right into a trap. I've explained to the driver that it's a matter of business with me. I've got to go, really. Famous last words. He's like, I'm just going to meet Dracula at midnight. What's the, what's the big deal? What are you guys worried about? Come on. I'm guessing some of the sets, like the castle they showed the exterior of, was like a matte painting. Let me know in the comments. He look, it's terrifying. Like he hasn't said anything or done anything, but just the way that they like got his lighting and he's all in this black like cloak, terrifying. I find in horror movies it's often like the subtle things that are the scariest. There is no driver. Dun 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 dun. The plot thickens. And like no music in the background either. And I know that was typically done with like a live orchestra in the theater for movies from this time. But the silence is just adding more suspense because you're just like waiting for something to happen. Armadillos? And of course the backdrop of this like beautiful but decrepit mansion and we have you know the natural light coming through the windows and this like beautiful archway under the stairs. So creepy. 
what business could you possibly have with Count Dracula? And no, no talking, just a slow descent down the stairs with this candle. Well, and with all this, I, I thought I was in the wrong place. I bid you welcome. He's so accommodating, and this, like, menacing grin as well. Run, buddy, run! Children of the night, what music they make. He's so creepy! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a big spider. No, thank you. Your instructions implicitly. Excellent, Mr. Enfield. Excellent. He's like, oh, so no one will know if you go missing. Great, 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 great. We will be leaving tomorrow evening. Like, the dialects, like, everything, just his mannerisms are so spooky. Oh, no. Oh! Good thing he has that cross. It's just a scratch. I love that lighting. I don't know what to call it, but where they just have the eyes, it's so creepy. Oh, okay. Just this trio of women slowly approaching him. Fresh from their coffins. Da, 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 da. And Dracula comes in through the smoke. Oh my god, it's so creepy. Blood in them. I'll be loyal to you, master. I'll be loyal. Not much for conversation, this guy. Okay. I don't know how hard it is to keep your eyes open with those lights constantly, like, shining in your eye. Captain dead, tied to the wheel. Horrible tragedy. Oh my god, that's gruesome. And just seeing it in shadow. <laughs> that's such a terrifying shot. Oh my god. Why, the man's gone crazy. Or he's gone vampire. Yeah, oh my god. Crew of corpses. Everybody's unalived. Cheese and rice. That was such a cool shot, though, down the stairs. And yeah, he's got these, like, big, big eyes and this crazy grin. Like, oh, my God. And I love in old movies when they show newspapers as just, like, you know, proof that this happened. And, like, how important, you know, the printed newspapers were. I think it's going in more for a hug. Yeah, oh, look out. Obey. A Night at the Opera with Dracula. I don't think I've seen that one. And, uh, Mr. Hawker. How'd you do? Count Dracula's just taking coffee, Xavier. I love how he just goes by Dracula because that name doesn't, you know, resonate anything yet. To be really dead, that must be glorious. Count Dracula. He's like, let me tell you a thing or two about being dead, okay? Transylvania. Oh, Lucy, you're so romantic. Was he? Is he? Or you just got caught up with the whole castle situation? Castle. Dracula. Transylvania. I like how they're romanticizing all these, you know, these words. There's definitely some pieces of this that are reminding me of Nosferatu, which obviously would be an inspiration for this. Oh, cue the bat. Oh, no. On the throat of each victim, the same two marks. Yeah, and it's interesting how we don't see any of the, you know, there's no blood or gore or anything. Like, the guy cut his finger, basically, and that's it, which I feel like is typical of this time. There weren't particularly, you know, super, super gory movies, but... It also adds like mystery to it as well by not seeing any of that stuff. This reminded me of um, Dr. Caligari. Puny things. Who 
wants to eat flies. You do, you loony. <laughs> He's like, that's why you're in here. You keep eating bugs. Yesterday can become the scientific reality of today. That must have been terrifying to see these doctors talking about it and that, yeah, it could be real. They're like, oh my God, what? We will get no more out of him now for a while. Take him away, Martin. On your way, old fly eater. <laughs> I haven't seen Van Helsing, but is that who this character is based on? Come along. What was that herb that excited him so? Wolfbane. Oh, okay. You what? I want you to have Renfield closely watched by day and night, especially by night. This is definitely making me want to watch the Nicolas Cage Renfield. I already wanted to see it, but now that I have, you know, this backstory behind the character. Please, please don't ask me to do that. Don't. Not her. And the way you can, like, telepathically talk to them and, like, hypnotize people. It's so creepy. Oh, that's such a creepy close-up. Oh, my gosh. Bye, Mina. Is there anything the matter with your throat? Oh, no, but I... Uh, permit me. No, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's like, it's not a scar for fashion. It's to hide my bite mark. Yeah, exactly. What could have caused them, Professor? Count Dracula. Ha 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 ha! That was good timing. In tales of my far off country. I can imagine. Why, John? Oh, that's a cool shot in the mirror. But of course, you won't see the reflection because Dracula doesn't have one! Da 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 da. You had better do as your father advises. Very well. So cool. I love the stuff like that. Yeah. He's like, wait a minute. May I call later and inquire how you are feeling? Why, yes. Thank you. He's so confused. He's like, is this a broken mirror? Like, what's going on? Like, this must be a trick. I mistrust my own judgment. Look. <laughs> He's like, I know exactly what's going to happen if I look in there. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Well, that's not helping his case at all. Definitely looks guilty now. Apologies. I dislike mirrors, Van Helsing will explain. How is he going to explain that? I just don't like mirrors. Okay. Not suspicious at all. What's that? Running across the lawn. Looks like a huge dog. Or a wolf. I was going to say, yeah, is that the wolf that's been howling? The strength of the vampire is that people will not believe in him. He's got a point there. Yeah, I like how this guy's an expert in vampires. We're not spending the whole movie trying to figure it out. He's like, yep, that guy's a vampire. You know, he's got all, he's checking all the boxes of things that vampires do. Professor. And the way he just disappears in the cloak. Oh, so creepy. Then he must have brought his native soil with him. Boxes of it. Boxes of earth large enough for him to rest in. Yeah, we saw that in Nosferatu as well. He had to take some soil. Be guided by what he says. It's your only hope. This actor's performance as well has been so good. He is so convincing and it's just terrifying. So this unblinking stare, you know, just so committed. <laughs> of all the places to faint in front of a vampire... He's so creepy. Like, it's just the small movements and, like, just the moving, you know, the seamless through throughout society. Other than Renfield. Renfield's locked up, obviously. But you know what I mean. Like, he's just literally in the shadows. I started to speak to it. And then I remembered she was dead. Oh, my gosh. Lucy's the woman in white? I could see that there were thousands of rats. With their eyes blazing red. Oh, gross. Red vampires? No, thank you. It's already been done. <laughs> Strike me down, dead doctor. He's got me going. <laughs> Excavated a mile around. I will find your earth box and drive that stick through your heart. 
Whoa, 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 we're making threats now. Okay. Wolfbane. More effective than Wolfbane count. Indeed. Oh, he's like, no, no, no. This guy is prepared. I'll give him that. He's got his vampire facts down. Come, there's not a moment to be lost. Oh, but I love the fog. I love nights with fog. She was terrified. Exactly. Yeah, she was her worst nightmare. I couldn't. I love the night. That's the only time I feel really alive. Because you're a vampire. Cue the bat. Yeah, here we go. I have a big bat. I will. And she's just calmly talking to the bat like it's nothing. You trying to do? Frighten her to death? No, I was trying to save her. Save her. That's a fine way. It's all right, darling. She just tried to bite you. He came to me. He opened a thing in his arm. And he made me drink. Oh, yeah, exactly. It wasn't just him feeding off her. Here we go. They're all crazy except you and me. Sometimes I have me doubts about you. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be need to be, like, invited in, but he's obviously hypnotizing people and they're letting him in, or, you know, like, the bat comes through the open window and then he's inside. What is it, Master? What do you want me to do? That's such a great shot with this super long staircase and having, you know, them descending and Renfield running up to them and, you know, them being in black and her being all in white. Yeah. Just this contrast. Such a good frame and so cool. I'm dying with all those lines on my conscience. All that blood on my hands. Ah! Ah! Oh, Renfield. Oh, my God. What is he going to do? Oh, throw him down the stairs. Okay, well. Uh... I'm very curious if this is a real set. Like, it looks very real. So, yeah, let me know in the comments where did they film this. You'd think Dracula would have better security around his coffin. I mean, for such a legendary vampire. Oh, and they're gonna have to kill Mina. I didn't think they would be able to take out Dracula so easily. He was just sleeping in his coffin and they staked him. So that was my first time watching the 1931 film Dracula starring Bela Lugosi. I'm so excited that I finally got a chance to watch it. It's been on the list for so long. I know there's many, many renditions of Dracula and I always try and watch the original first if I haven't seen it. So I'm so glad I finally got a chance to watch this and learn more about the backstory and some of the lore. I have seen Nosferatu. You can check out that reaction video video as well. This definitely pulled from Nosferatu. I feel like they mentioned it a few times and I definitely want to watch the Nicolas Cage Renfield movie. I knew it was about being a vampire. I didn't realize how directly it was correlated. I'm assuming the movie Renfield is about the character Renfield that we see in this film where he, you know, has this connection to Dracula. It sounds like Dracula made him drink. I thought it turned him into a vampire, which I guess in a way it did as now Renfield is, you know, trying to search out blood and wants to eat these rats. And, you know, Dracula has this mind control over him and can tell him to do things, basically. I know I'm still relatively new to the horror genre. I've only been watching horror movies, you know, for the past couple of years for the channel and I'm so excited that I finally got to watch this because I feel like from what I know it's one of like the first original horror movies I believe Nosferatu would be you know the very very first as it came out in 1922 but you know still a very early version of what is considered you know laying the groundwork or the foundation for what became with horror and obviously vampires play a lot there's a lot of vampire characters in horror movies so it's so great to see this and to really learn more about some of the history of horror movies and where it all started and I couldn't imagine what it would have been like to be in the theater you know in the 1931 and watch this and just see you know the lighting and all of these things and there wasn't really blood or gore which again I'm not surprised by everything kind of happened off camera but the fact that this Dracula character was you know fully verified you know this is Dr. Van Helsing is saying 
yep, this is Dracula. Like, yeah, this is a vampire and he's doing all these things. And I think this is the first time we've seen the correlation between the word name Dracula and vampire. Obviously, now those things go together. Everybody knows that. But this, I think, was the first time. And that kind of added to the fear is that he still has some, like, anonymity. Other than, like, his town that he's from, everybody in the town knows. Like, okay, stay away from that guy. You know, when Renfield's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go meet Dracula at midnight. Everybody's like, why would you do that? Are you out of your ever-loving mind? And, you know, when he travels to London, he's just able to walk the street and you know not a care of the world he you know kills that girl and then just walks off and it's like no big deal nobody's you know following him nobody's suspicious of him and obviously we've seen in other movies as well that vampires live hundreds and hundreds of years and do have you know a very long standing history and you know were able to get away with things before you know technology or before you know vampire lore was really had a foundation so it's very interesting and I'm glad we didn't spend the whole movie trying to convince the audience that vampires exist you know Van Helsing right away was like yep this guy's a vampire he fully believes in it he's like yeah these are all the you know the classic things that vampires you know represent and and, you know, they would be indications that he, in fact, is a vampire. At first, they're, you know, like going and looking into Renfield. And then when they meet Dracula and, you know, the signs start to be more and more prevalent, he's like, oh, this guy's a vampire. And, you know, then Van Helsing's job becomes convincing other people that vampires exist. And I feel like in that sense, he's trying to convince the audience. But at no point does Van Helsing go like, oh, vampires aren't real. Like, what are you talking about? And then, you know, kind of changing his mind towards the end. Throughout the entire course of the movie, he's fully on board for this vampire, you know, situation. And I loved Bella's performance. He was so good and so creepy. And like I said, it's like the subtle things, just like the lighting of the eyes and, you know, that unblinking stare and just his like small movements of, you know, flipping his cape. And he definitely had some creepy lines. Like I won't recite them, but he had some terrifying sentences and not a ton of dialogue. Um, like I said, I haven't read the book. So let me know in the comments how true to the book this is. If that's, you know, in the opening credits, they said that they were basing it on the book but it's just those small subtle movements that you know let him kind of move through the world with ease that I think make him the most terrifying and being able to transform into a bat and a wolf and like have all these abilities and we did see obviously the vampire lore of crosses they didn't mention holy water we didn't see garlic they had wolf's bane silver bullets weren't mentioned obviously mirrors we saw as well but yeah it's definitely interesting and that drinking you know his blood would you know form this bond between the two of you but such a great performance. He really did an amazing job. I would be terrified, you know, coming out of the theater after seeing that. And he's got this, you know, menacing smile as well. Like he's so happy because he knows what's going to happen. And, you know, the first thing that happens in the movie as soon as Renfield shows up and, you know, we get our first victim Renfield right away. And then he takes him to London and then he starts, you know, terrorizing this other group of people that he meets. But yeah, such a creepy movie and no music, which I mean, they went to the opera. So we had, you know, that little bit of music. And like I said, I know there would have had to been a live orchestra in the theater. But to me, the silence was just as creepy. And then you could really accentuate when you heard, you know, the wolves howling and and kind of just this empty space that would exist and especially with this creepy old castle that was so beautiful let me know in the comments if it's a real set it looked pretty real like some of the shots I could tell okay I'm like that looks like a painting you know for the background which was pretty common during this time but yeah let me know in the comments like some of the production details how they did the set deck and everything like that but yeah I hope that castle still exists I hope it was a real set that they were able to use or maybe you know just make look disheveled a little bit because it was such a character and you know that scene on the stairs you know right at the beginning Renfield coming up cutting his way through the cobwebs and then even at the end when we have Dracula and Mina coming down and Renfield meeting them halfway and obviously the stairs end up being to Renfield's demise as he ends up falling down the stairs. I don't know if he makes it but it wasn't looking good but just such like this haunting landscape and so well done and just it really added this sense of like eeriness and the fact that he would be living in this decrepit old castle you know his one room that he has is nicely done and everywhere else in the castle is you know falling apart. 
and that last shot as well with Mina and John, you know, ascending the staircase and, you know, it sounded like wedding music playing in the background and then instantly cuts to like the end. So they get their happy ending, which I don't think is common for Dracula or horror movies. Like usually, you know, the bad guy wins. So that I wasn't expecting that, but I guess, you know, maybe at the time they had to give it a happy ending. I don't know. And obviously as soon as Dracula is killed, Mina's connection to him is cut off. She comes out of her hypnotic state state and you know her and John walk off together and the fact that Dracula was killed so easily I felt like was anticlimactic but again yeah I don't know if that's accurate in the book they literally just walk up to his coffin and then stake him in the heart and we hear him like cry out we don't even get to see his death scene we just hear him in the background and we know he's being you know staked I feel like the pacing was good. Sometimes these older movies, the pacing can be a bit slow. Obviously, there was a lot of dialogue, which again, doesn't bother me, but I feel like the pacing was good. It was a relatively short movie. It was like 114 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. And, you know, having the title card right at the beginning as well is very typical. I'm glad it wasn't a silent film. I think being able to hear those lines in Bella's voice just added so much depth to the character and just like this intensity that I think reading the text on screen or having a title card come up wouldn't have been able to convey. So I'm glad there was sound. I believe the next version of Dracula is in the 50s. I'll try and watch them in order. I haven't seen any of them. I've seen like Interview with a Vampire. That's the only, I think, like one that would fall into the Dracula, you know, I mean, not even Dracula, like the vampire world. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen Van Helsing and I'm very curious now if Van Helsing's the movie is based off of this character. It seems like it would have to be. What are the chances, you know, for them both to have the same name? So yeah, let me know in the comments if you think I should watch Van Helsing or the next Dracula one. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's the 50s. I know there's one in the 90s as well. And I'm curious to see if Bella makes like a guest appearance in the 50s one or, you know, something like that, like a background actor or an extra or something and just like a little nod to his, you know, legacy that he started as Dracula. I've watched Bella in a few other movies. You can check out those reactions on my channel as well. One called White Zombie and then The Devil Bat. Definitely nods to Nosferatu as we have, you know, this castle and, you know, he's called Count Dracula and Count Orlock as well and traveling on the ship, you know, bringing the soil with him. I'm pretty sure Nosferatu was also like leasing an apartment to his victims or something across the street. Like there was some connection to like land ownership and we saw that um, being a similarity in this film as well. Yeah, the having to bring the soil over. Nosferatu was the first time I had seen that in a vampire movie, so it was interesting that that happened. And I'm pretty sure Nosferatu also goes on a ship uh, with his coffin. And the use of shadows, very much not from Nosferatu. And, you know, having the captain of the ship just tied to the wheel and, like, that's how he dies. But again, you don't see any of that. And, yeah, I definitely feel like they took influence. And they, I definitely mentioned the name Nosferatu as clearly now the legacy of Nosferatu has made it into, you know, the world and people are using that as a frame of reference, much like we would use Dracula to talk about a vampire. I loved that mirror scene, one of my favorite shots from the film where they have, you know, opening this jewelry box or whatever it was and having the mirror insert at the top. And, you know, that's when Van Helsing really puts it together that Dracula is in fact a vampire. As you can see, he's, you know, or what I guess you can't see is that he's not in the reflection, but Mina and John are and they're talking to him, but not at him. And, you know, these shots back and forth of him trying to make his brain figure out what's going on. He's like, is it a trick of the mirror? And because he has such a base of knowledge about vampires, he realizes, okay, this person's a vampire. And then I definitely wasn't expecting him to show it to Dracula. And it's like, hey, you can look in this mirror for me real quick. Obviously Dracula freaks out and like hits the box and, and can't really give a reason because obviously we all know what the reason would be. So definitely added suspicion to his character, but a really cool way that they did that. And just even the angle of the mirror. And I'm assuming they just filmed the scene without him in it obviously 
but I really like that they took the time to, you know, do that creative shot and it obviously helped emphasize the situation and I really liked that shot we had of Renfield right on the boat when he's, you know, got both of his hands on the stairs at the bottom of the ship and just this, that's the first time we really see him in this new trance basically with these, again, unblinking stare, these big, big eyes and this manic grin, you know, talking about how much he wants to eat rats and they immediately haul him off to the insane asylum and, you know, lock him away. But just that shot, like, angled down and we had a few close-ups of Dracula, you know, when he's going to bite people. Overall, I thought it was so well done. I'm so glad I finally got a chance to watch this classic horror movie. I don't think it was like terrifying to today's standards. It's definitely creepy and I can imagine if you would have watched it when it first came out in a theater it would have been terrifying especially if you hadn't really seen anything like this before. This being one of the first horror films that people I don't know what their expectations would have been because they didn't really have anything to compare it to and I think this is creepier than Nosferatu because they just you know stepped it up a little bit. Nosferatu is still obviously a classic but to me this is one's a little bit creepier and having you know that experience in person in a theater when you don't like I said if you had been to a horror movie before or you don't even know what the horror genre is how do you feel you know coming out of the theater are people terrified are they now thinking vampires are real because you know the scientist in the movie told them that they are I know Frankenstein came out in the 30s as well but still just very few and far between horror movies it's not like you know the how many horror movies are released you know into theaters every year now just would have been a very interesting experience for someone in the audience i loved bella's performance i loved renfield's performance like i said i definitely need to watch the nicholas cage renfield van helsing the next dracula the list just keeps going i love how they did the lighting across his eyes i've seen that you know in adam's family which i'm sure was very much you know influenced by this and emulating it and just such a cool technique and i loved all his subtle you know creepy things and just opening his cape and you know taking someone in basically and hypnotizing people and just a really well done classic movie. I can definitely see why this was you know Bella's claim to fame. This was his iconic role. Such a great performance but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. There is no driver armadillos that's gruesome and just seeing it in shadow he's like let me tell you a thing or two about being dead okay was he is he or you just got caught up with the whole castle situation <laughs> he's like that's why you're in here you keep eating bugs how is he going to explain that i just don't like mirrors and she's just calmly talking to the bat like it's nothing